Tonight, seven acts will perform some of the greatest songs of all time as they battle it out to win the chance of a lifetime. Singing in their own unique style, we celebrate the legend that is Frank Sinatra. This is Frank Sinatra, our way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rochelle Humes and Alexander Armstrong! Ladies and gentlemen, to Frank Sinatra, our way. Now, there's just a small clue in the title as to what the show is all about. But why now, Rochelle? Well, why indeed? Well, 2015 is the centenary of the great man. This is the year Frank Sinatra would have turned 100. I bet the Queen was looking forward to sending that telegram. I mean, I assume she does send them to America. Ah, so, uh, to Frank, shortly. Oh, you'd have thought yeah. for Frank. Frank Sinatra, unquestionably one of the world's greatest entertainers. Yes, he is a true legend, the singer-singer whose enduring appeal transcends generations. And tonight we are celebrating his music by giving seven unknown acts an incredible opportunity. Yep, our acts will be putting their own stamp on some great songs. They'll be doing this partly for our entertainment, of course, but mainly, let's face it, for a once-in-a-lifetime Time chance to win a slot alongside a host of stars at a very special Frank Sinatra concert. How exciting! I know. Now, we are delighted to say that we're also joined by four celebrity music experts. Yes, indeed. They'll be sharing some stories, of course, as well as critiquing the acts. And I'm sure they will be very frank in their comments. Oh. <laughs> we have a brilliant comedian and actor who's just finished starring in a West End musical. It's all red eyes himself, yeah. Rufus Hound. <laughs> there he is. Rufus, we have the incredible singer whose live performances are stuff of legend. It's the fantastic Misha Paris. Yes. <laughs> Next to Misha, he was one half of the Arrhythmics and has worked with just about everyone, including Mick Jagger, Bono, Stevie Wonder, Bob Dylan, Katy Perry. He's a music legend in his own right. It's Dave Stewart. <laughs> one of the world's greatest saxophonists. He's played for the likes of Sir Paul McCartney, Eric Clapton, Robbie Williams, to name just a few. It's Leo Green! <laughs> Thank you very much. So, those are our celebrity experts, and believe you me, we'll be hearing plenty from this quartet of quality as the evening progresses. Absolutely. So, we have a fantastic night lined up for you. But before we get going and meet our very own rap pack of contestants, I'm joining in now. Mm. Uh, let's remind ourselves of the unique brilliance, the charisma, and of course, the astonishing voice of Frank Sinatra. Just an extraordinary talent. And as you'll see, a number of our acts are in their 20s, with the youngest only 16. So clearly, Frank's music is as popular now as it ever was. It is an incredible legacy. It is indeed. Right, so here is how it's going to work. Our contestants are all going to be singing Sinatra in their own way. And our experts here in the studio, we've got Rufus, Misha, Dave and Leo. They're going to let us know what they think, but ultimately it's going to come down to our 11 music industry heavyweights. They are going to hold the final decision and choose the winner. Their work will be taking place behind closed doors, but trust me, these guys obviously know their stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who precisely they are. OK, so we've met our jury and we've met our celebrity experts. It's time for the main event. Performing for you tonight, a father and son from Doncaster. Doing it their way, it's Max and Jason. It's Thank you. To say Rush Thank Shell. you. Yes, Rufus. As a dad, I can only imagine that your heart must be absolutely bursting with pride. Absolutely. It'd be, it was incredibly charming. Wonderfully performed, you nailed all the moves. The beauty of what you two have got as father and son, I think, came off you in waves. Thank you. Yeah. Misha, you grow up like a lot of us listening to Frank, and you yourself have had massive duets. Yes. So what did you think of this duet tonight? I love it. Well, you know, I, I think that they're definitely in sync, and vocally it sounded great, but you still kind of get this feeling, for me anyway, mm -hmm. that him on his own would be amazing, oh. even though I know that that sounds really mean, and I don't mean it yeah, in that no, way, no, but... No. It's oh, quite hard yeah. to sing me and, and my shadow on your own, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little tough. <laughs> <We're> doing, <laughs> OK, moving on. Dave, <laughs> I know that, obviously, you're half of uh, a famous, a massive duo, and obviously a massive Frank fan. What did you think of our duo here tonight? 
Well, I was very amazed at uh, how young the dad looks. Yes, I Yeah. Quite yeah. <laughs> an easy line. Well, isn't I'm a, a father of four, so it's an amazing experience being on stage with your children. I've mm -hmm. done that too. <laughs> and you sang really well, and it was interesting to watch somebody moving around and singing live, as you know. A lot of people lip sync when they're doing that. So I think you were really good. Uh, Leo, you actually met Frank, didn't you? I did. I was lucky enough. My father exposed us to all the great music, and it's such an important thing for every every parent to do. Like you say, if you've got kids, it's the best thing you can pass on. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing is you've, you've started the show. So I think that's that's worth a round of applause in yes, itself. Absolutely. Uh, so well done. I mean. You know, these are, these are tough shoes you're getting into. You know, everyone knows the Sinatra and Sammy Davis version. It sounds to me like you listen to the Robbie Williams version. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I would have preferred a bit more of the Frank and Sammy, but well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There you are. Very good well, stuff. Well, a panel of experts made of that. Yes, Rufus, would you fly to the moon to hear that? Um, I'm going to say two less positive things, but then I'm going to say a positive thing at the end, so just bear with me, you better right? better do. No. The first thing is that... One of the, th the great things about Frank Sinatra is he was a consummate storyteller mm -hmm. and he was able to really tell you the story of each of the songs and a big part of that was his phrasing, that each sentence pushed through to the end. With your like, vocal gymnastics, you're, you have to break up some of those sentences and you lose some of that sense. So if, if you'd have nailed that, it would have been completely, completely exquisite. It, it, that, you look at the pianist and it's, it's like you're slightly nervous about doing it. But you should stand there and just own the room because if you can sing like that, you do own the room. So you have that confidence, it would be absolutely incredible, but just so, so mesmerising. Beautiful. Misha, how do you think she did? I'm, I'm speechless. I, no, first of all, you have the most amazing voice. Your Thank voice you, is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I loved it. I thought you were great. I just think that you could just pull back on the vibrato a little bit. Sometimes it's too loud and it's just pull back a little bit. Sometimes just like take your time to deliver each word. Timing is essential with a Frank song. So just take your time a little bit. But vocally, it's ridiculous. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's a great thing. <laughs> but she's gorgeous. Okay, moving on, Dave. Personally, you've got a beautiful voice. And I think it's got a lot of melancholy in it, which I love, and sadness. And you could make a record with just very little. I would probably have sang it with just strings, very, in a much more sad and drawn out way. And as we all got sadder and sadder in the audience and people started crying <laughs> and stuff like that, some guy would be, be behind the scenes or busy getting the contract ready. I That's think. it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, uh, Ligo, obviously this song has been covered by Nat King Cole, Peggy Lee. How do you think that Nadia's version compares? I think the biggest compliment I can, I can pay is that halfway through, I, I, I wasn't thinking about Frank Sinatra or Peggy Lee or Julie London, all the people that have sung that. I was so taken in by what you're doing. I think you're a star. And I think if we remind ourselves why we're here mm -hmm. and we are looking for someone who can stand on a stage and hold their own and make a song sound like it's their song, not doing a tribute act or a look-alike or nothing like that, you did that. That was your song for those two minutes or whatever it was. You had me, and I think you had everyone at home as well. Well done. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. I wouldn't be singing on this day today if she wouldn't have come in our way and give us the application form. So, thank you, George, Phyllis. <laughs> you did, Phyllis, proud. Now let's find out. Let's find out if our panel of experts think you are riding high in January. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, how much of a good idea was it for Phyllis to give that application to George? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, to come out and do it and, and to be that kind of straightforward with it is incredibly hard. But, mate, you just absolutely smashed that. Thank you. Uh, it's... Thank you. <laughs> You, you were cool, you weren't... There's, there's that temptation to try and, like, play that Rat Pack thing, to play that, that character of being that guy, and you, you avoided that beautifully, but you're clearly quite a cool bloke. And you just went, cool. yeah, this is me, bang, there you go, have that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So well played, man, absolutely first class. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, now, Misha, how did you find George's all-round performance? He is born to do it. Absolutely. There's no two ways about it. You have no fear. You. you own... You own that stage. 
and you are totally believable. Great voice, Thank great you. execution. Your voice is really strong, and everything about your performance couldn't stop watching you. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I did think that he was a bit of a Buble vibe. Yeah, I love you that. You know, no, a bit of Buble that. in there. Yeah, yeah. the English version. That's a big one. Yeah. A big what, what, Very English? good. <laughs> no, English is in not American. No, no, I'm with you. I just think, I always think that the English version of Michael Buble would be called Mickey Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, probably. Fantastic. Uh, now, Dave, obviously, George is only 22, but with that performance, did he convince you that he knows a lot about life? Yeah, actually, it was torture at the beginning watching him get the martini. <laughs> and, <laughs> but immediately he got off that stool, he was the first person I thought that showed the real swagger, yes. the word, yes. you know, like that Frank has and rock and rollers have and all that stuff. And he, he did own it, and his body language was fitting exactly with the the words of the song, and he was in it. And when somebody's in it, they can just do anything. And he did it. Brilliant. Thank you. You did. Oh. Amazing. Now, Leo, George has been influenced by Frank from a very young age. Was sure. that obvious to you in his performance? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a hard song to sing, not just at your age, at any age. When Sinatra recorded it, he, he very famously did it, walked into the control room and said to the producer, there you go, there's your hit. And the producer said, no, go and do it again. <laughs> and Frank was very miffed and he walked out and he performed it. And it was quite an aggressive performance. A puppet, a bobo. It's like a smash in the mouth. And you did that tonight. You got us. There'll be people at home who'll be saying to themselves, has he got a CD out? <laughs> I'd like to see more of him. And that's all credit to you. Well done. <laughs> Phyllis did well. Yeah. Phyllis did well. <laughs> Jordan, a fantastic <laughs> performance. What about those comments? You know what? It's an absolute honour to be singing on this stage tonight, and thank you all for your comments. Thank you so much. It means so much. Mr Stewart said you had swagger. Yeah. You'll take that? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very good indeed. OK, well, let's hear it again for George. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, three cracking performances so far. Four still to come. Uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 uh. You're forgetting something there. Isn't there five? I mean, I no need to go into that one. And, uh, come on, we should tell everyone. We... There's five performances. Yeah. You don't want me to? Yeah. Well, I won't bother, that's fine. I won't bother. It's no, fine. I'm being coy. Obviously, I won't need to. Yeah, of course, we'll tell them. Yeah, See, that course. always works. I get my husband with that reverse psychology. Yeah. Fell for it. Right, ladies and gentlemen, later tonight, my delightful co host oh, here, delightful. Mr. Alexander Armstrong, a man of many talents, are going to be forming a Sinatra song, a classic. I can't wait for that. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. <laughs> Rochelle Hughes. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Right, so, back to the competition and our next performance, which comes from a young, self-taught musician doing it his way. It's Marley. Now, let's go and find out what our panel of experts over here thought of that fabulous performance, Rochelle. Yes, uh, Frank's version of that song was an absolute bestseller. Yeah. Do you think that Marley's could be a hit? I, look, I, I think it's very clear that you've got the heart of a musician, and all of the musicians I know, like, speak through the music more than the... Like, the voice is just another part of the sound they're trying to create. Mm -hmm. um, for that song, to me, it's got a bit of heartbreak in it. You're such a young man. I, it's, it's only... Look, there's nothing wrong with what you did oh. at all, right? But as a personal... matter of personal taste to me, it, just five more bottles of scotch... <laughs> and, 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 and you know what I mean? And then well, and then sing that song. That. No, well, oh, not yeah, with yeah. that we're condoning <laughs> heavy drinking. No, but it's, no it was fantastic. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, just brilliantly done. Well played. Oh. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, really great, yeah. Song there is a huge, huge song to take on. Do you yeah. think Marley pulled it off? Well, first of all, I have to say that is my favourite Frank song ah. of all time. It's right. mine too. You, need to, I, you know, so too. I'm going to be really hardcore, unfortunately, because it's my favourite. <laughs> Vocally, he has a beautiful voice. You really do. Your voice is very breathy. You yeah, have a beautiful, good. breathy voice. So nice, oh, but not for that song, because oh, that right? song. You really have to sing that song with a lot of guts, though. You know, it's a big, big song. So all I would have said mm -hmm. was that he should have chosen another one, not so, you know, one that demanded that sort of vocal oh, delivery. But you have a beautiful, breathy voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. OK. Right, Dave, uh, obviously you work a lot with young artists. Would you like to work with Marley? Well, I agree with Misha. That he has got a very beautiful, breathy mm -hmm. voice and I mean, quite unique in a way. And I think 
To get anywhere, you have to be unique. It's no point competing with other people. So he has Absolutely. got that unique sound. I think that was really brave to do that. And I think you have a career in music. 